Good morning. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Off the Press, a program where we take a look at the newspaper headlines with the help of our guest. I have two gentlemen with me in the studio this morning. I'll start with Dr. Femi Ido Adegoke. Pleasure to have you join Good us. Morning. Good, morning. Good morning. And of course, we have Gwalaha Olojede. Thank Good. you for staying with us. Good to be morning. here. All right, gentlemen, we'll start with the Punch a newspaper this morning. And the big one on the front page is, please needs 250,000 rifles, 1,000 APCs, 774 drones. That's according to the IGP. You can see the rider to that story. Asurok VIPs have depleted personnel meant for main uh, police jobs. That's uh, Police Service Commission speaking. And then we have something also, another writer says, South African police got 1.137 trillion naira in 2018. 20 billion naira was given to MPF, says Adamu. Um, a lot of revelation on the front page of the paper this morning. And then you're looking at the picture of Ulissa Mitu, uh, the ex-PDP spokesman who was jailed for seven years. Uh, let me take it as is written there. Ex-PDP spokesman Metu jailed seven years to return 375 million naira. I had to call that with a little bit of emphasis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, uh, more headlines for you this morning. Uh, we have um, NECO fires 19 workers for certificate fudgery. A medical consultants declare nationwide strike over NUC PhD policy. Beggars lay siege to Son Wolu's office, lament harassment. More headlines. We have the killing of the Remo Stars player on the front page. IG disband Zono Saz dismisses Inspector. Okay, uh, let's go to the top of the paper now. Okay, there you have it. Southwest speakers meet on a Moteku public hearing outcome. Immunity for National Assembly principal officers, others divides reps. And then how Buhari regime depleted ECA by 1.5 trillion naira. And then there's that, that worrying uh, info at the front, 128 billion naira lost to gas flaring in 11 months. That's according to the NNPC. Gentlemen, let's start with the Asurok VIPs have depleted personnel meant for uh, main uh, police uh, jobs and then of course the equipment let's start with you well yeah i, I don't think it's, uh, there's anything new about that we all we all in the know that the vips go about with uh, police officers and we don't have enough police to actually uh, police police the public but my challenge is now you want to have 250,000 rifles and um, 1,000 police uh, constables. I, I'm of the opinion that Nigeria needs more than 1,000 police officers to be recruited. At the time, I heard that they were trying to do 10,000. I don't know whether they've done that. We need more police officers anyway. And then when it comes to 774 drones, the request by the IG, uh, well, it's good to go techie. We're waiting to see how they will be able to handle that. You don't just budget money for these things or get them without the competence of being uh, deployed. Because one of the challenges we have with our police system in Nigeria is their training. I, I've said it and I'm saying it again. Most of them are ill-equipped to actually police a nation like Nigeria. So I hope we're going somewhere. And I know we've mentioned on this program before, comparing Nigerian budget with South Africa. You can see there, even the South African police is getting one point something trillion and Nigeria is getting 20 billion. It's, and he's always said it, that we're a poor nation and we just go around thinking we are, we're rich. rich. We're not. Okay, let, let me ask you about the ex-PDP uh, spokesman, me too. Uh, uh, some um, tend to miss up the... I saw some newspaper headlines saying 39 years. He was given 39 years. We know that he's to serve all of those years concurrently. So the maximum he's going to serve is seven years. Well, look at that ruling. Um, was that speedy enough for you? And uh, what's your thoughts on it? 
the, the, the wheels grind very slowly, justice in this country. It's taken four years to get to this point, um, and it's probably one of the fastest. Some of the people that have been jailed, some of those cases were in the court system for 11, 12 years before we could do anything about them or get them sentenced. And the, the clear message for me is the need for us to move that anti-corruption war from catching them after they have taken the money to preventing them from taking the money. Now, 400 million naira, how much of this 400 million naira are we going to ever be able to recover? Well, the court has said, okay, pay this much, pay this much. If he doesn't have the money, so what is going to happen? So it might be better for us to put more emphasis in prevention than in prosecuting. Do you know how much money has gone into getting to this point? Prosecuting that case, how much the EFCC lawyers, the EFCC investigations, his own lawyers, everything. It's a whole lot of waste that has gone into that. And that's, that's, that's my comment on, on that. Right. Um, 128 billion naira lost to gas flaring in 11 months. If we, we could add that to the budget for the, the police. police, and that will help us. I want to get your thoughts on that, uh, Femi. <laughs> well, like, I'm just going to think in line with what you just said about the corruption. Mm -hmm. Preventive measures than catching them or chasing after them. How, how did we get to lose this amount of gas flaring? Why are we not preventing the leakages? Why are we not doing something uh, proactive? Why are we always reactive in this nation? Because for me, this is the, the, the loss is loss. So why is it making the news? What are they doing? The question is, what are we doing so that this doesn't reoccur again, or so that it doesn't get to next year? We are hearing another same story. We've lost certain amount to gas flaring in 2021. So that's what should be our, our focus now. All right, I guess we will go take uh, more headlines. Let's see what the Nation newspaper is saying this morning. Um, reps under fire for bill on lawmakers' immunity. That's um, what the Nation newspaper is saying this morning. Um, Okay, I think uh, what's showing on your screen is slightly different, so we'll just um, stay with this one now. Uh, reps on the fire for bill on lawmakers' immunity. That's what's on the front page of the paper this morning. Uh, we also have Why or a Flyover is Important by Buhari, you page uh, 45, and you see the governor of Ekiti State. There's a picture of the president. I'll just show you a quick look at um, how the front looks this morning. This is the front of the paper uh, this morning. Okay. Um, IG, policemen on illegal duty killed footballer. Special squad disbanded. Amcon seizes Bubagala Dima's houses over 900 million naira debt. Boy, 16, hides inside banking hall overnight to steal 340,000 naira. How Oshimi is paying full salaries by Yetola. That, that surprises me. How did the boys stay in the bank? And... Yes, it's, it's, it's surprising. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Under the counter somewhere. And then the issue of Meju is captured on the front page again. Money laundering. Meju jailed 36 years. That's how uh, the nation is also going uh, with it. On the back page, we have, is the Supreme Court's judgment final or not? Mm. The conversation is now resonating mm. across the board. Review, 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 review. It'll be interesting to hear uh, his thoughts. So if you can get a copy of the paper, go take a look at uh, Nee's comment on, is the Supreme Court's judgment final or not? Gentlemen, reps on the fire for bill on lawmakers' immunity. Should our lawmakers have immunity, Malahon? Do you know any lawmakers in jail? <laughs> I don't think no, so. Not really. I don't think so. No, none comes it, to mind. The, the, you see, these are the people that are advocating for even more pay, the people that we said are already overpaid. And for sitting in that hall, these are the kind of bills that comes to mind. Are these the important things in this nation right now? Mm -hmm. We have the re police reform bill, right? There's a constitutional review going on. There is electoral bill. There is PIB that has been there for 11 years. More critical issues are on the table and all they care about, 
the priority, I, I think the, the, the lawmaker is from Oyo State and uh, not Debumi or something. It is ridiculous that this is the priority of a lawmaker in Nigeria in the mix of all the more important priorities of this nation. It shows how selfish the assembly is becoming and as, as, as represented by this member that is there. He's interested in, in, in immunity. Immunity from what? Right. Yeah, let's hear your thoughts on that before we move on. Well, 100% in agreement with Mr. Bola. You see, I've said it and I will say it again. The people, we as a people, we have a problem, big problem. Um, these are our reps, representative, or they are, they are representing themselves because from what they're doing, they're not representing the people because there is a lot of issues, as in pertinent issues, affecting the people that needs to be dealt with on the floor of the house. But they're not talking about that. They're talking about uh, immunity for their principal officers. And like he said, if a member of the House of Rep from a state, if it's from my state, I will do everything within my possible power to recall such a person. Because you're not moving anything for the people. Like he has he listed all that is to be done and it's not being done. It's irresponsibility in government. All right, uh, let's uh, go to another paper this morning and see what we can find. The This Day newspaper is next for review, or should we go with the Vanguard first? Let's just uh, stick uh, with This Day newspaper. Uh, on the front page, you have pundits predict Fire Me, RFI joint 2023 presidential ticket. Uh, Haneze Yakasai back Kaduna governor's powers Government power shift advocacy as ACF Afenifer defer. Magu strikes again, sends Metsu to jail. Uh, presidential endorsement. Of the, you see the French president on the front page there and a Nigerian fashion designer, Kenneth Isa. Let me just show you a quick glimpse of how the paper looks this morning. That's uh, Macro on the front page of the paper. Okay, new report rules out Naira devaluation in 2020, says CBN has forex buffers, tools to keep Naira stable. Dangote commences a pre-testing of $2 billion fertilizer plant ahead of inauguration. House uh, restates calls for resignation of service chiefs. You find details on page 8 of the paper. Now, uh, yesterday on Plus Politics, we actually talked about the uh, talk about 2023 uh, presidential election. We talked about zoning and the likes. And this morning, we're having this on Fire Me Elrofi joint presidential tickets. Your thoughts? It's one of the options on the table. If you ask me, 2023 is heating up Isn't too, it too early. early. Too early. Fire me is how many how many years has he spent in this current term? Maybe one year. One year. Governor. That's the governor. So, no, but but he's been a minister. But he's been a minister. Well, it, it doesn't matter. I think it's a distraction because once this thing gets into the full blast. There's major distraction for governors all over the old place. And I, I think we need to get it out of the space for now, bring it back a year to uh, 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 election, and, and start talking all, all this stuff. The, yeah. the people that will contest, you can be sure that 80% of them have not even have not even come into the space. That's what um, uh, let me take you up on this before we move on to the next paper. New report rules out Naira devaluation in 2020. says CBN has forest buffers, uh, tools to keep Naira stable. What's at, your thought? At what cost? <laughs> that's, that's the question. We can keep it stable, but at what yes. cost? And those costs Deplete. that we are hiding and Deplete. hiding Deplete. somewhere, Deplete. Um, Deplete. will it come to bite us later? Yeah. It's possible we'll keep it stable in 2020. Mm -hmm. Stability, meanwhile, is actually very important. It is the issue of devaluation. The, the, the value, the exchange value, is not what is important. It is the stability of that value that is important. But at what cost are we doing this? That's, that's a question for the civilian government. <laughs> All right. Uh, for me, I'm going to take you on the banquet this morning. Insecurity gunmen go on rampage nationwide. Um, it has uh, quite a number of riders to that story, and I'll take them for you. Delta community attacked, man killed, wife abducted, daughter injured. Gang sacks Benue community has called war claims pharmacist for others. 
Gunmen kidnap another victim at Onichua Olona, demand 15 million naira ransom. And we also have um, IGP disband zonal intervention squad in Ogun over footballers killing. Cultists invade Delta police formation, seven arrested. We won't tolerate killings from police. That's Bajabia Mila. A House of Representatives speaker talking this morning. And again, our reply of is commissioned, and the picture is on the front page of the Vanguard newspaper. And more headlines for you or Shomole EPM plotting sponsored protest in Edo government alleges. Uh, let's let's bring go to other headlines in a bit, but for me. Um, insecurity gunmen on rampage nationwide. You can see across yeah. board, not just in one part of yeah. the country. Are we not having any reprieve at all? Well, the security uh, issue in Nigeria has become uh, a major menace for us now. And then it seems the federal government is not even budging. They're not concerned because from the memo from the uh, NS a national security advisor, it was clear that something was missing in the security architecture of this country. And then he brings it back to the National Assembly. They're not talking, they're not pushing the police reform or the security architecture reform. They're talking about uh, immunity. And then you can see from all these riders, it's across all communities. There's Delta, there's Ogun, there's e everywhere. There's um, Onicha, Olono, or somewhere. There's so much going on in security, and then we want people to come and do business in Nigeria. When even the locals are not secured, then they want foreign direct investment. I don't understand how that is going to work. If we have insecurity, we're not going to have our economy grow. It's all, it all works in hand. It all works together. And I think it was last week, we were talking in Delta State, where six or seven... Uh, uh, buried uh, body were exhumed for investigation. We need to know the end of that. Unlike in Ogun State now, they said they have disbanded the special squad. There was a time they were saying, stop SARS. What has happened to SARS? They are suddenly resurfaced. And now a life or more lives are being lost. They are suddenly resurfacing. They're just there being, uh, you know, no. amended. And no, this, this particular one in Ogun State was said that they were on an illegal uh, duty. They were not supposed to be there. And a, 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 one young lad who is a footballer, probably the breadwinner of his family, his life is lost. And let me quickly mention, if it wasn't for the protest of the people in Shagam, then maybe we wouldn't have gotten this reaction from the Nigerian police force. Mm -hmm. And it's not enough to just disband them. They have to go through uh, some prosecution because their life was lost. Um, there are other issues on the front page as well. This one says, uh, pirate attacks. World shipping groups threaten to report to Nigeria to the UN. That's on the front page as well. Nigeria loses 38 billion naira to subsidy oil tipped pipeline repairs in one month. 38 billion naira. Okay, we have um, why the law requires pre-election cases to be decided before elections. That senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falano, speaking this morning. And uh, the reps are also here again today. They're talking about we deserve SUVs, not cars, for oversight functions. On the back page is the usual sports. Bolaho, <laughs> take your pick. Oversight functions. Yeah. You see, we... We've spoken about hiring more policemen, which could have helped with this security issue. For a while, there was a fight between the IG's office and the police service commission, who has the right to recruit. We don't even know how that matter ended. I, I, know, I know they went to court. The court has decided on it. I think it's the police service commission. The question is, where are those 10,000 policemen? We are talking about, see, we need more people to police this nation. We are not getting that. Rather, we are beginning to discuss around uh, uh, National Assembly whether they are being well paid or not, when some of those money should even be taken away to provide security for this nation. We're living in the same continent as another, a smaller economy that devoted 1.3 trillion to its own police. There are 60 million people living, less than 60 million people living in South Africa. We are over 200 million here. We are doing 20 billion for the same, or maybe let's even say it's 100 or 400, I don't know what, what that number is right now. 
those are messages that should resonate with the president to know that we are poor. We can't afford what we are paying National Assembly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to the <laughs> Daily Sun newspaper. And uh, this morning, again, insurgencies on the front page. Senate others military back to Sambisa. Catholic bishops to hold nationwide protests Sunday. Um, let's take uh, your thought on that. So, Senate orders military back to some visa. I don't know why the sun is putting it that they, way. I think they see see now. Yeah, because the story is actually, um, they are asking that uh, another military uh, checkpoint, a barrack, uh, barrack, barrack rather, yeah. be built in some visa forest. <laughs> but, well, the, there is a point in that. But the challenge is the people that are supposed to take these decisions for the military to be on this insurgency. They are not even speaking. And the man that is supposed to be a national security advisor has said some things. And the federal government, I'm calling on additional, and it, what's that other man's name? The um, spokesperson for Wari. Because when, when minute eat things happen, they're quick off the block to come and defend the presidency. What about, what, the, but on this, issues like this, they're not even speaking. And the president himself is not talking. And there's, there's it's so much insinuations around that so much is going on in Asarok. So we are just living like the country is just on a, um, on a downhill, uh, free for all. Let everybody do as he likes. Okay, the, the bishops are hold, going to hold nationwide protests. Is this really necessary or would it further inflame the polity, do you think? I think it's necessary. I mentioned earlier, the people of Shagamu spoke up because of that debt. Nigerians need to begin to speak up. It's not only when Afeni Ferry or Anizi are trying to benefit from a reigning government. That's, it's not, this is when they are supposed to speak and come out and make the people. It's a peaceful protest. They're not fighting anybody, but we're just showing our grievance. And most of our House of Rep members, we can recall them. All right, I'm told we have very little time. I'll just uh, recap two of the headlines. Left FG launches campaign against U.S. visa ban and then labor spoils for war over electricity tariff VAT hike. I'll pay salary as long as I remain governor. Oyetola is speaking. Any thoughts on this before we wrap things up now? Labor spoils for war over electricity tariff and VAT. VAT hike has already started, so I don't know what the fight is all about. Um, it's, it's already law. Yeah. In this land. So maybe what you'll be talking about is they want to go to the National Assembly to seek a repeal of yeah. the law. Okay. Now, the, the other bit about uh, electricity tariff, okay. we need to have, I think there, is, there, there are going to be some open engagement about electricity tariff. Yeah. The truth is somewhere along that space, we need to increase the tariff, but there are other issues we also need to discuss mm -hmm. to make it make sense. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming on the program. You're Thanks for having us. And that's a wrap for this morning. We'll bring you more stories here on Plus TV Africa. Stay glued. My name is Felicity Ezeweke.